It's ringing for us. Let's see what happens here. Hey, brother. I'm Tay. This is live radio at its finest, my friend. This is Coach, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer here outside of Columbus, Ohio, and I just want you to know, as I've told everybody, Ante, you are my hero. Ante, just take a few minutes here and explain to our listeners exactly what happened, what prompted you to do it, what was the response when you went and interrupted a Hindu prayer before the Senate last Thursday. Go for it, Ante. Well, on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, we went down with about 125 Christians and leaders from around the nation to deal with the uh, wicked hate crimes bill that the Democrats are trying to pass that would uh, abridge a First Amendment right for Christians and allow uh, homosexuals to persecute us uh, and codify that into the law. So we went and gave out materials to every senatorial office. We talked to every aide. We tried to get with senators to encourage them to vote against this unconstitutional piece of uh, legislation. And we also went and dealt with the uh, Justice Department, who is um, teaching states how to deal with Christians, calling us hate groups, fundamentalist hate groups, and, and basically prejudicing local law enforcement against Christians and telling them that when we show up at certain events, like a homosexual event, remove us. Mm -hmm. so they're, they're teaching them to deny us our First Amendment rights. So Ante, let me stop you right there, because sure. this has happened twice. I'm going to let you go back on. Brother, let, let me sharpen you a bit. I learned this lesson, Ante. Ante, they're not First Amendment rights, brother. They're God-given rights. The First Amen. Amendment is restriction on government. It is a God-given right, and they get us all the time to demand our constitutional rights. Like they're giving us something, Ante. They can't give us a daggone thing. God gave us that right. Go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Amen. I totally agree with you. <laughs> well, I, when we were finished and done and everyone left, my family decided to uh, stay an extra day and recuperate. Uh, I read in the paper, the Washington Times, that night that a Hindu was going to be offering a prayer in the Senate. First time ever, right, Ante? Yes, first time ever. And so once we read that, we knew we have to go do something. And so we were not sure what we should do. We began to pray, but we knew we were going to go to the Senate and see what the Lord does, and we were able to get in, and our hope was, as we were praying and, and wondering what the Lord would have us do, uh, do I rebuke the Senate, do I just start quoting scripture, I finally concluded the Lord wanted me to pray, and so we decided we were going to pray to the Lord Jesus Christ and cry out to him for mercy for the wickedness that was about to take place, all right, so when we, we waited till the last possible minute, we were hoping the Senate or senators would stand up. Because there's a few that profess Christianity, supposedly, so we were hoping they would stand up and object or do something and stand up for the truth. And when we saw no one's going to stand, I began to pray. I, I prefaced my, I just said, Dear Lord Jesus, and I began to pray. And I don't even remember the things I said. I was asked afterwards, I said, I don't know, because the unction and the anointing of God was on us. His words flowed from our mouth at that moment, and he basically prayed through us. And, and so there came, there came Senator Casey from Pennsylvania, and he pounds the gavel, and he says, Sergeant of Arms, bring order, Sergeant. And you continued to pray, Ante, and what happened? Some guy come and they handcuff yes, you and yes, drag you out, yes, or what happened? Yes, the security came, and uh, what I did was I continued to pray. I turned my back to them, I put my hands behind my back, and I just offered myself to them in the proper position for arrest. I knew what was coming, so I let him cuff me. And so you had counted the cost before you did it. Yeah, yeah. We knew. We said we agree. You know, whatever happens, happens. You know, I said if we get arrested, we get arrested. Um, we're, we're just we have to do this. And and you know, I mean, I didn't go there to get arrested. I went there to to obey God, and whatever the cost or price we pay, so be it. So they drug you off. And all of a sudden, then Senator Casey comes back and gets quiet, and they bring this Hindu guy to him. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Hindu, start praying again. I don't mean to besmirch him, but that's, that's basically what happened. And as he begins to, to pray, what happens next, Ante? Well, my wife began to pray. She, she's, she stands up and begins to pray. Yes, and, and she quoted, her prayer was wrapped around John 14, 6, which she cited in her prayer to the Lord Jesus. And then they took her away, and then my 19-year-old daughter stood up and said, Lord Jesus, forgive us for betraying you. You're the only one that can forgive us of our sins. And oh, hair standing up on the back of my neck, Ante, right now. Ante, the word says that you will be brought before governors and kings as a testimony for his name's sake, brother. What an Amen. awesome opportunity to be able to do that, Ante. So the church of the status quo 
at least in Columbus, Ohio, is eating you up, brother, saying you made Christianity look bad, that that was a respectful man that was standing there, that he was praying to the God of the universe, which is basic. Auntie, I'm hearing this stuff, that, that you were out of line to go disrupt that. How, how would you respond to that, Auntie? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm sad because that's basically a statement that reveals they're ignorant of Scripture and they're ignorant of our history. And, and yet they choose to give uninformed opinions about such things without researching first. God sends prophetic people to do all kinds of things in scriptures and to speak to all kinds of people that would appear disorderly and out of line, number one. And number two, I was upholding the uh, original intent of our founders Amen. who made this plain. I was being law-abiding. Our current form of government and the majority of them in all branches are in rebellion to God and they're in rebellion to our founding fathers, and God will continue to send people to them to plead with them, to rebuke them, and demand that they conform to the intentions of God, our covenant with God, and our founding fathers who sought to honor the true living God. Well, Ante, what would you say to those Christians out there who, for some reason, have upon themselves the desire to be nicer than Jesus, who said that, hey, Ante, do you believe Jesus? would have stood there and allowed that Hindu man to pray in that Senate? No, I don't believe he would have. He said, the world can't hate you, but me it hates because I testify that its works are evil. Amen. That's the Jesus of the Bible. That's right. He and gave public testimony of the wickedness. Over and over he said, wicked, adulterous, perverse generation. How long must I bear with you? A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. He called an entire generation a bunch of adulterating, wicked people. And he said this out loud before the Pharisees, before the leaders, before the crowds. He didn't, he didn't uh, uh, say this in a corner. You know, Jesus preached against sin. He called people to the carpet. Mm. Our, our heart in being there was simply that Jesus would be magnified. What a privilege it was to lift up his name in the Senate. I'm just gratified that the <laughs> Lord let me do it. But Ante, take a moment, if you could, and explain to our listeners why allowing that Hindu prayer was such an affront to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to the gospel and to the Lord that we say we serve. Well... Read the Bible. What happened to Israel when they began to turn to other gods and incorporate the worship of other gods and their names into the worship of the true and living God? What did God do? Did he shrug his shoulders and say, no big deal? Did they continue to be blessed and honored by the Lord? Or did a foreign nation come and destroy them over and over? Were they terrorized by ancient people that came? Okay, the parallels between what happened to Israel and what's happening to our nation are there. It seems that almost every day our nation, our government, does things to provoke the Lord. And our heart is simply that we would continue in the mercy and the grace of God. And so, you know, forgive me, but people are too busy watching TV, going to movies and entertaining themselves in front of hell, television and viewing the vomit spewed out from Hollywood, and they're not in their Bibles, therefore they don't understand that God judges nations, and when you begin to call upon the names of false gods, judgment will surely follow. Ante, you are uh, you're a rare duck in that you uh, you understand what the wise man once said: "Those who forget the past are condemned to repeat it." This this is just all cycled all throughout the Bible of, of people. I had Bill Fetter tell me one time that he says, "Coach, we start out loving the Lord, and then we." He said. It's like a clock. It's a cycle. And he said at a quarter after, we begin to fall away from the Lord. And then at 1030, we fall completely away from him. And then at, at, at 1045, he smacks us and repent. And then we come back to the Lord. And he said we are somewhere on that cycle right now in America where those with a prophetic voice are going out and are crying out and crying out and crying out that the punishment of the Lord is about to fall. And Ante, you're one of those guys, aren't you? That's what the Lord's called us to do. That's part of what we're doing. You know, our heart is to reach the lost, to bring them to Jesus, to disciple them, to stand for life, to oppose the homosexual agenda that's in this nation, which is a judgment of God that's come upon us because we're, we've become an idolatrous nation. Therefore, we're being turned over to, to, to uh, these vile lusts and affections as God begins to abandon this nation. And our hope is that we'll return. You know, we want, we want to see Jesus lifted up and magnified in this nation. And the church is the reason why the nation is the way it is. We've lost 
our softness, our light is dim, we're worldly, we're carnal, we're Laodicean, we're undisciplined, we're lazy, we don't love holiness, we're not set apart unto the Lord, we love this world and the things of this world, therefore we have no power, we have no moral authority to preach the things we do, we have no voice. And so God has a remnant that is living the truth and that is preaching the truth. And I'd like to see that fire spread to the church general and that we would just go up in flames in America in a good way, in the fire of revival, glorifying Jesus by our message and our lives that reflect the character of a holy God. Ante Pavkovic is, uh, is a hero, folks, and I don't care what others in the church world are saying. This man went, and he went into the lion's den, and he defended the cause of Christ. And I consider it an honor to call him my friend. Now,